All right, back again. Michael Zoll here, doing a video tutorial series for Westside Electronic Music. This is part eight of our WISE to Unity integration series. And today we're going to be working on, this will be a pretty short one, just an introduction to the mixer and soundcaster layouts that we can use to mix our audio. You know, get everything evened out for our Viking Village map that we have going here. So uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to pop over into WISE here and this is a mixer I already created for uh, my footsteps uh, layering that I did here. But we're going to create a new one and just do kind of a, you know, a general mix of a bunch of our elements or, you know, at least what we have in the project. And I'll just call this uh, VV Viking Village, you know, environment, I guess. That'll be fine. And we'll make an associated soundcaster uh, session for that as well, VV environment. All right. So we have two new mixer and soundcaster uh, sessions going here. And if you ever want to find those, you can go into the uh, Sessions tab in the Explorer, and you'll find them in uh, Soundcaster Sessions and Mixing Sessions to open those up and work on them. So this is basically like any mixer that you would find, like in a digital audio workstation. You know, there's you know more options per channel strip, though. Um, typically, you know, based on all the stuff that we can do, you know, directly to each channel um, in Wise here. And simple enough to get one set up. So we're just going to do one that integrates the, the general, you know, elements that we have going on in our map. So we'll, uh, let's get our footsteps in here. And we want our ambient sounds, our ambient birds, our ambient lake. Uh, let's put our torches in there. And our warrior princess voiceover. And I think I'm going to have to add a master fader also. There we go. There's my master. And you see you can scroll up and down the uh, mixer layout to see all the different things you can do. Um, and to get this to work right, uh, I'll show you the soundcaster. And this is a neat little feature that allows you to, you know, kind of an, in an object-based way, you know, drag all of your elements in here and be able to play them simultaneously so that you can mix them, you know, as if all the elements were you know, playing within a, a portion of the game that you were that you were on. So we'll put the same stuff in there. We'll put our, uh, and you can, you know, group these together however you like. I'll put maybe my, you know, footsteps and my uh, warrior princess voiceover here. And, um, and then these I'll make, you know, these are looping ambient sounds. I'll put my torches and my ambient birds and my ambient lake right down here as well. So uh, you can just hit play on each one of these, you know, to get audio looping. So this kind of simulates being, you know, I'd be in an area now that's close to the water, uh, fairly close to one of the torches, and, and the birds are playing as well. So maybe it seems like that uh, the lake is a little bit loud. I can maybe turn that lake down a smidge. And maybe the birds down just a little bit too. We want those to be a little you know, further in the background. There you go. And what would a footstep sound volume wise against the rest of those ambient sounds? We can test that here. And as you can see, you can see that the, since we have a switch group, it has, uh, you know, switches in it, obviously. As part of our mixer and soundcaster layouts, you'll be able to see and switch between those various switches here in the switch window. And if there were any states in our game or RTPCs or triggers, those would be listed as well, and you know, you'd be able to switch between them. Uh, but for now, all we have is switches. So we can, uh, you know, test out what our dirt footstep might sound like. Um, that sounds a little bit low, so I have the option here. I guess I'll just bring the footsteps up because it doesn't look like I'm hitting too hard on my uh, master bus. 
got plenty of headroom there. And let's switch uh, over by an area where we'd be close to the lake. We could, uh, you want to hear what the water footsteps might sound like, so water. Switch and check it out. Back to our dirt. Water. Okay, and we'll check out our deep water. Okay, not bad, just to give you an idea of uh, how you can work in these to kind of level things out. And Hey you! You in the leather! Think you're man enough to ride one of these? That's probably going to need to come up significantly as well. Uh, And you can see it's playing back all those containers in the same way that they're set up. You know, it's going to play back that entire sequence that we created in our sequence container. You know, this is uh, the random containers that are nested within our switch container, and so on and so forth. Hey, you! Mister! Want to buy a horse? Maybe turn this up even a little more. Hey there! With the big sword! Yeah, you! Think you're man enough to ride one of these? I'll maybe bring those torches down just a smidge. It's not going to be often that I'm right up on a torch, but uh, we'll just check it out as is. So that's uh, that's not bad for leveling things out. Let's just take a you know closer look at the and uh, let's stop these. Also remember when you're playing back looping sources, um, you don't want to hit play. I mean you can if you want, but uh, each time you hit play, you're going to be playing back another instance. So you're stacking more instances of this so um, of this source, uh, you know, to be played back. So now it's playing back like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 that I, you know, just played. So you just want to hit it once and let it loop. Short sounds like these, you know, obviously not the same thing. And this is pretty straightforward. You just get to see a lot of stuff in your mixer, you know, mutes and solos, say we're, you know, playing back all of our ambience and we want to listen to just our birds because we wanted to add a, uh, you know, we wanted to mess with the pitch on it or something like that. We can, you know, just solo things out. Um, solos and mutes, you know, just like in any other digital audio workstation. Um, and you see tons of options here. Output bus volume, um, low pass filter, Watch using the mouse wheel to scroll up and down when you're on these sliders because it will start to slide your slider rather than scroll up and down in the window. So you want to scroll like over here. Uh, you have effect, you know, plugins that you can add if you like uh, right from here. I think I have to stop everything if I want to do that. Set effect, and then I can add plugins right from the mixer window. Um, yeah, and all the stuff that you would see, you know, in the design view, or at least the, the basic options in the design view for, say, like our, you know, torches, like um, low-pass filter, high-pass filter, pitch, you'll see all of those in the mixer view, you know, down here towards the bottom of, the, uh, of each channel. And we're just going to set one effect up on this. Um, we'll go ahead and add a limiter onto our master bus, much like we would when we're doing the final output of a, uh, of like a music mix or something like that from our digital audio workstation. So, um, uh, yeah, peak limiter. And, you know, there's some defaults here. Uh, let's just see what the, this one looks like. And we can pull that up and edit And so, just leave this here. And unfortunately, you can't see it. Uh, you can't see the meters unless you're working in a capture session. And let me talk about uh, capture sessions for a minute here. That's something that I'm not going to be able to work on in this video series because I have not been able thus far to successfully get my, my Viking Village project to successfully build from uh, Unity. Uh, you know, with my with my Y sound design. I don't know what the issue is. I've tried to troubleshoot it a bunch, gone through a bunch of steps, moving these sound banks into the proper 
um, place within the Unity project to get it exported. And as of this moment, I have not been able to get it to work. Um, I'm sure I will be able to, but I'm kind of on a time crunch here to uh, finish this video series. So we won't work on doing a, uh, a profile um, build in Unity and doing a capture session. Uh, I wish we could because when you do that, then you can actually you know, be play testing the build of your game while you're mixing it in Wise. Uh, so you could have like a play tester sitting next to you, hey, run through this level um, and, and you know, do these things and you can be you know, mixing the audio you know, within Wise and uh, using your control surface if you like as well to you know, get things leveled out. And so anyway, that's kind of a bummer, but you know, what can you do? So I'm going to um, move my master fader up here just kind of bump up against. Let's uh, play back some of our footsteps and see how we're hitting the... can probably bump this up even further. Our threshold is at negative six. Right. our look ahead time all the way up so that it's uh, going over our peak. There you go. Now you can see the now you can see the extremely hard limiting at negative six that's happening. And so I can uh, I'll back this off to just uh, like negative um, point one. Get as much volume out of this as we can. And uh, play my footstep again. It's clipping a little bit there. Let's bring our bus down. Get our meters and still hot. And really, I'm just going to bring it back down to zero. To say if we were, if we had guns or you know fight sounds, uh, you know swords clanging, that kind of thing, this would be much louder um, than our footsteps, and we'd want some headroom to work with. This is just a, you know, a little look at using a limiter on our master bus. And <clears throat> yeah, so there you have it. Um, just a quick overview of using the Soundcaster so that you can you know, test multiple sound sources against each other to get a mix going. Using the mixer window, being able to play around with your um, parameters on your channels uh, in the mixer to get your mix going. And um, yeah, you can experiment more from there. Uh, one last thing, you can, just, you can set your view options in here <clears throat> you know, to what you want to see in the channel. Kind of like in Pro Tools, you can you know, select what you want to see in your channel strips. There's a lot of options. You could just tailor that to what you're using. And yeah, so have fun with that. Uh, that should be it for this quick little overview. We got one more left uh, in this video series that we're going to do in the next installments, and that will be uh, optimizing our assets uh, for our game. So thanks again for checking in with us and uh, my torches are still playing. And we'll see you later.